the closest I've gotten, and I'm not proud of this, is after I played like Grand Theft Auto for too long, and then I would be driving. <laughs> I, can I drive would over this you person. punch somebody in the face. I, no, what? I I would have to like slow myself down so that I'm not like speeding away or yeah, trying bad. to ramp off of something. <laughs> <laughs> like. Yeah. Welcome to New Game Plus. This is a retro gaming podcast where three guys spend seven days playing one old game and then we talk about it. My name's Dustin. My name is Kenny. Nolan. And this is episode 421. And the question of the week, if you could erase one game from existence, which would it be and why? 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 <laughs> why? I, I started by trying to put on like my big brain hat and was like, we're gonna go back in time. We're not gonna, We're gonna get gonna an answer. Like <laughs> nope. ET or something that like helped, you know, like crater the early like video game Easy success of the industry in the eighties, and then we'd have an even more thriving game industry today. That felt like too much effort to figure out which was the right. Correct. Game. So I'm gonna just be a bitter old man shaking my fist at the lawn and say Fortnite. No, you took the easy way out. <laughs> I did. I took the low hanging grumpy old man fruit. Oh no! Low hanging <laughs> grumpy old man fruit. I don't want. No, I definitely don't want that. No, I don't want that. Uh, mm. Nolan. Well, why Fortnite? Because wouldn't you think that it's kind of brought a lot of people into gaming? Is it I don't know what game you're talking about. My answer. <laughs> my answer is World of Warcraft. The massive multiplayer online game from Blizzard Entertainment. Why? Take away that That's the beauty. the hottest of takes. Because he missed out on it. And it's wants ruined to ruin a lot of people's lives. Life. A lot of people that loved the game now hate it because of where it is, because what Blizzard has done to it and what Blizzard has become is a different conversation. Sure. And... <laughs> It, it's it's a it's a tough answer because you do it causes a ripple like Kenny's saying in the in the space time continuum because that game is so important and valuable. Yeah. But there's a there's a tiny chance if you removed that game from existence, we wouldn't have a podcast today. Kenny and I okay. would be friends. Yeah, maybe that's okay. It brought a lot of people together. Okay. Uh, my answer is World of Warcraft by Blizzard Entertainment. <laughs> I get it. Player He's online. like, get me out of here. I get it. Uh, mine is going to surprise you, most likely, but I've got a solid reason for it. Okay. My answer is the first Assassin's Creed. <gasps> Save yourself a lot of pain. Heartbreak. I love Assassin's Creed, and it's and no, and it's not about either of those things, which are basically one and the same. What I have grown to be ha, ha, have a real dislike for in the past few years is this copy paste game that changes the skin but is the exact same game that you can go anywhere in this open world that's covered in a fog of war so you have to close or, or climb a ubisoft tower of some design <laughs> so that you can tower. unlock more uh, side quest and go and collect endless meaningless r things to retrieve and things to do that really don't connect to an overall story and he's it, cooking it has it has pervaded every ip that i know and love i have hinted at it but i'm going to go ahead and say it and i don't want to give my full opinions or thoughts yet um i haven't played final fantasy 7 rebirth for weeks now because oh, man, as soon yeah. as i had to find my first tower to unlock in a fi in final fantasy i'm i'm for real down, to unlock some of the world and see some of the side quests to do there i they it, did that they've done it it's in a, it's in Final Fantasy. It's not only it's in, in Final Breath Fantasy. It's in Final Fantasy VII. It's in Zelda now. It's in it's in everything. Oh, you're right. And I don't know if it started with Assassin's Creed, but that certainly popularized it, and it has become the thing. And I don't like it. I I, I, I did. 
Yeah. Maybe, but now that everything is that, it's just yeah, it's too much of a good it's thing. Become, it's become tropey for it's you. It's become yeah. a- absolutely tropey and time wasting for me. I yeah. want yes. Final Fantasy 13 corridors and a really good story and beautiful. Yeah. Game. I mean, I don't have to have that, but I I don't I don't want. Please stop telling me this next world is ten times the size. Of, like I, <laughs> I know that no, does not nothing for me anymore. That disgusts me. And I'm like I don't, I don't care. <laughs> maybe if Assassin's Creed didn't exist as much as I love the franchise, then maybe that wouldn't have become yeah. the thing to do in every game. That's a great philosophical answer to that question. Makes me sad. I know because you love that game, but it is what it is. That it's true. It's in everything. My thing is you've got to do something different because if you just do the same and try to fit in, you'll disappear. Like in our retro game of the week, Tetrisphere. Overview. Tetrisphere is a puzzle in 64 game that came out in 1997 that was developed by H2O Entertainment and published by Nintendo. This developer only has four games under their name, two Tetris games published by Nintendo, Flintstones, Big Trouble in Bedrock, and Aiden Chronicles for the N64. Four games is low and and interesting because usually the developers... You know, we research them if we haven't heard of them. They've done, like, a lot, but I don't know. Four seems low to me. H2, they've only done four, or they've done four that was published by Nintendo? Two were published by Nintendo, and t- both Tetris were Tetris games. Tetris. For the N60, N64. Okay. Called the new Tetris, I think. Uh, so, speaking of Tetris, we Tetris. haven't played any Tetris games. Is this our first Tetris game on the podcast? We well, played Puyo Puyo, which played is Wordtress. comparable. We played Wordtress, which is a Tetris game, actually. I that was I think that yeah. I think that's one of the games that was actually developed or, or yeah. developed by Alexei Pajitnov, who created yeah. Tetris. Uh, I, I think. I think he and did. We played. Dr. Mario. Dr. Mario, which is a Tetris like or Tetris clone. Tetris ish. Sure. Yeah. So we did, but Wordtris is the only true. Like, I think uh, there's Tetris. I think he did Welltris after that, which was like the. You're like looking down a well as you're playing Tetris. <laughs> okay. He did one called like Hatris, I think, where you get different hats that you have to line up. This is he, the Prime Minister of Armenia? Uh, Yes. Okay. He did. <laughs> no, that's a different he game. Did, no, that's Wordtris. Oh, that's literally word trick. Well, that is word trick. Wait, yeah, yeah. then that's not him. That's okay, why no, I was no. like, he didn't make Tetris. I'm looking up. I think that Alexi. We're crossing I can't too. believe that you remembered that that guy. Yes. <laughs> that he, uh, the Armenian politician, physicist, investor, and businessman, Armin Sarkisian. Yeah. developed Wordtress. Okay, so maybe Alexi didn't. So then we haven't played no. any Tetris. No, we haven't. Really? I, wow. I I didn't think about that. I could have sworn we'd have, pl- have played one of them. Did we do a did we do during one of our couch co op sessions a yeah. like retro game challenge? Uh, yeah, but that based count. on like some Tetris content. Sure, sure, sure. But we haven't like played a game. Which is interesting because Tetris is I still think maybe the best selling game of all time. One mm. of the best selling games of all time. Uh packaged with the Game Boy. With so the Game Boy. That's not a bad yeah. thing for it. That when, when it was viral, that Tetris 100 or whatever. 99. We Close. Talked, <laughs> Tetris 99. Close. I, I'm showing them up by one. Close. We talked about it at least a little bit. I played but it I don't some think too. I ever played it. Yeah, yeah great. But we didn't play it like on the cast. Okay. First Tetris game, weird, in 64 one. Yeah. Uh, which is not the first console you'd think of weird. when you think of Tetris. The last, honestly. <laughs> one of, yeah. While this carries the Tetris name, the game does fall into the experimental tetris category and they didn't do this a ton where they break the traditional 2d falling block trademark in favor of 3d graphics and a completely different format you are peeling an onion you're using same shaped blocks you using same shaped blocks you clear the layers of a sphere to get to the tootsie roll center of the tootsie pop I don't like you saying that. He's got he's got so many metaphors lined up. I like this. Y'all don't eat onions and Tootsie Roll Pups? 
both suck. I eat both of those things. <laughs> Me too. At, in the same meal. Uh, so this game was actually, I looked into a little bit of the history, found it intriguing. It was originally going to be called Fear, P-H-E-R-E, which I kind of like. Yeah. Uh, and it was developed for the, or being developed for the Atari Jaguar. And oh, then Nintendo saw that they were doing that and thought this could be a Tetris product. And so hmm. they stepped in and wanted it. So they brought it into the fold. And Alexei Pajitnov, the creator of the original Tetris, did consult on this game. So the, okay. we'll, we'll talk about it more. No, no. But in my opinion, and I'm not a Tetris guru, you'll find out throughout this episode. And if you've listened to us before, you know that I... He's a critic. I don't know if I despise. I don't despise. That's too strong of a feeling. But I... Kenny, you know this. ...have no affection I do know this, for Tetris. But every time I remember it, I get a re-offended. And I don't yeah, know why people too. do. But... Uh, uh, but... Um, this game, the only thing, I, thing that I feel that it shares with Tetris are the shapes of the tetrominoes. That's about it. It's not okay. the same kind of game. And that's great. I didn't know that. That's great backstory. And I disagree with what you just said. And we'll get into it. Gameplay. As Nolan said, you are viewing a 3D sphere. And your goal is to dig to the center of that sphere. And so on the outside of the sphere, you're looking at different tetronomos. Uh, and so you you've love got saying that. Blocks. I could, could be another one, but they've got a blocks is a much better. Real no, fans just say blocks. We don't say tetronomos. We've got a specific name for them. Why wouldn't we use that? Because we're we are real fans, and real fans say blocks. I don't know if you have all of them here. You would you, you guys would have to you let do me know. Not. But you've got the L shape, you've got the T shape, you've got the a square, and then you've got an up Z. and a uh, and a a vertical and a horizontal line. Yeah, right. You don't have the Z. And also the you get the squiggle, not the Z, but yeah, the, the squiggle. That's yeah. a Z. Yeah. <laughs> then you have it. You have the Z. Yeah. Yeah. What color is? It? I don't. Purple? I don't remember the Z. Purple. Or, yeah, purple. Or no, blue. that's the L. Anyway, what I'm talking about. I don't think you have a Z, but either way, you have the tetronomos that are already on there. So rather than blocks falling into place like they typically do with Tetris, they are already there, and you are a key mechanic here is you can grab certain ones and move them to a different spot so that you can line up like shapes and then you do have a block that you're able to drop into place and when you do if it is next to two or more so if it makes three or more then all of those disappear and around like a tetris the line a line, but it can even go around the sphere. Yeah. It goes deep too. There's like a three, yeah, obviously layer. it's 3D, but there's a depth to it as you're peeling the onion. That was a good yeah. analogy. Thank you. Uh, and, you, but it's it's so fundamentally different than blocks so falling into yeah. line. Yeah, completely different. And and enough so, it's kind of hard to explain because of all. Of yeah, but the I did great moving parts, and you did you did great. great. There's like there's gravity. There's a lot of like implications here. Wow, there's gravity. Things happening. There is. I don't believe. Yeah, in that. there's um a lot to take in. In fact, I am a Tetris vet, right? But they veterinarian. Uh, but I had to do the tutorial, which they give you a tutorial. It's like a, they present it like a university class too, because he's wearing like a little graduate hat, and it kind of feels that way. There are like three tiers of difficulty in the tutorial to learn, um, to like truly understand all the mechanics. But when you are, it's a great tutorial, um, for a complex. <laughs> Calling it complex, Dustin did a good job explaining it. It's, it's pretty simple when you look at it, but like there are combos um, to yeah, to look out there's for. There's complexity you need to understand. Yeah, it's, there's scenarios it's, it's to. Look. It's unintuitive. As as Tetris. unintuitive. It's unintuitive. It's unintuitive, especially Absolutely. if you're used to 2D blocks falling. 
Um, right. So Tetris itself is so intuitive. intuitive. Yes. Like you can watch it for four seconds and you understand the game. This is not right. that. It takes a lot more. That don't skip the tutorial is yeah. what we're saying. Don't skip the tutorial, and it ends up because of that. It's a good puzzle game. Uh, calling Tetris puzzle game is accurate, but it's so diff. It's just so different and so much easier. I think. Um, I don't know that I would even consider classic Tetris a puzzle game per se. It it's categorized I mean, it that way. Puzzling elements. I know it's like in that category. Yeah, yeah. Fits, Action RPG. It, it, it's its own thing. <laughs> yeah, it rose above. But it, it rose above. Yeah. Um, but this one truly does require uh, situational thinking, on the fly, like understanding of sc- scenarios and stuff. And I, I'll say, uh, I was frustrated with myself after when I watched back my first play. There's a core mechanic that didn't click for me in the first uh, watch of the tutorial because I'm trying to do something in 10 minutes and edit it. Uh, the sliding mechanic is so key in this game. Yeah. Um, otherwise, you are looking for, like you're moving the ball around looking for three that line up perfectly, which doesn't always happen. And maybe they do, but you can make it even better if you slide a piece into a specific location. So... There, there's more to the game than, than you might think, and I, I really like the depth. Yes, that was a pun. Nice, but I, it, it's, it, I like the the complex, the complexity they added to this. However, you've got different game modes, but I would yeah. argue yeah. that they are virtually the same thing. They that are. there's nothing to change. Each and every mode, you are getting to the center there are some nuances here the the puzzle mode less yes. so yes sure no no okay you've got rescue mode and hide and seek both of those are getting to the center there's something in the center that you're trying to reveal and when you create a right. hole large enough you don't have to take all the sphere mm-hmm. away you just have to kind of like dig down and if you get that hole large enough to a friend s- comes out that's in rescue or no maybe that's in both rescue and hide and seek yeah uh, for puzzle it isn't that the one kenny where it kind of sets up a uh a, a, it's just a very limited thing you're not even really moving the sphere around at least in the first few and you have one or two moves to to yeah. make that that gets more complex as you go further into it but it's it's a it's a challenge mode that is more a typical puzzle like it the name says yes. and the goal is to Correctly optimize for solving the specific problem you're set up with instead of just like revealing your way in. And that and that includes having limited amounts of drops and slides. Yes. To to figure out how to get rid of all the blocks at once. And There's the constraints mo- on the normal formula in the, well, yeah, in but the, and the yeah. moment you do it wrong, you you lose and then you you can try it again. So like and you have to start it, think over. think if a Tetris, an actual 2D Tetris was set up but with one spot missing yeah. and you were given yeah. you can pick the shape and then drop it and you solve that puzzle. That's kind mm-hmm. of what this is in a 3D yeah. environment. But more interesting than that, because that would be a terrible puzzle. <laughs> that, was a, that was a that was level one. <laughs> <laughs> uh this also remind like there's something about this game that like tickled my brain because i was like wait i noticed the cover of this game big time did i rent it that usually means i rented the game yeah, yeah. if i was like drawn to the cover i still don't know i feel like maybe i did once at least but then it also started reminding me of it was like some sort of toy i had that would looked exactly like these things and you could like Take the pieces off of it, and it's I a Rubik's wished... cube. No, no, no. <laughs> it wasn't no, a Rubik's cube. It, it was like um, some like a connects block or something like that. It, this was just such a like, um, I don't know. It looks very tactile. Yeah, yeah, and it so. I think I rented the game, but I played it I, at a friend's house. I there there was no experience. <laughs> to for me to bring to the game so I, it, it was a true learning experience with this but when you get those big combos like it i wish it said like tetris i wish it did something <laughs> cool but it does feel really good when you go you go from like the big sphere to like w- with one combo you can oh i can actually see the core now like that yeah you and you do have different kinds of combos you're going for classic 2d tetris you're setting up your your Tetris, you know, your four blocks at once mm-hmm. with the long line and 
if you're trying to maximize the score, the primary thing you're doing is setting up for those big turns to happen. Here, you do have combos you're looking for. They're not as, like, singular. They're a little more nuanced, but they do have some kind of big payoff in points bonuses or in some, like, extra moves that you can unlock, which is kind of cool, and we should talk about those. But you can do both a gravity combo, which is where a piece is falling into piece because of something else you've moved and completing a set there, and then that becomes its own combo, which has bonuses. Or you can do a fuse combo, which is... A little harder to explain it's where you're you start with like a power piece and then you move it to slide it into a combo um and then it's kind of removed it's that one's a harder one to explain but there's two distinct kinds of combos you can look for uh, that give you some like cool bonuses my complaint with the gravity combo is for me visibility visibility unless you're moving the sphere to see what's underneath you're just guessing i think that's and what they wanted it, it is what they wanted but it's annoying sometimes because you don't really have things removed enough yeah. to really you can't know see all of you're it. making assumption yeah. or you're having to way move it over here and then move it way back over here and and it just it's a little unwieldy to kind of get that information and the more time you're taking like there's not a, a ongoing clock but if you start taking too long a clock does show up and it's so terrible the <laughs> camera starts to scroll in closer and closer to the sphere yeah. and and if it and so you're trying to like rapidly throw anything down and if you get a, a couple of combos off then it, it goes back out timer's not there anymore but if you don't then it's game over yeah i i kind of like that though because if you're gonna if you're gonna have a timer, it need, it does need to feel kind of panicky. I I get and, it. And you, in a Tetris style game, I feel like you do need yeah. that faster you music, have to be moving like, yeah. as quick as you can, kind of vibe that feels on. Brand. Because the only other game over is if you incorrectly drop a tile or tetronimo, some would say, uh, three <laughs> times. Some would. If you do that three times, you've got like yeah. three health, and yeah. so right, you have some. One is taken away each time. Yeah. And that happened yeah. to me more than anything because of what you're saying. There were so many scenarios where I could see, like I could rotate it and see like a, a piece of one. And I was like, okay, cool. I drop it here. It's going to trigger that one. And it was like one off because you can't see it. It wasn't fully sure. revealed. So it, it does, it yeah. tricks you and also incentivizes you to not go for those riskier ones until you're like for sure. And that's where the sliding really does shine because you can, I mean, there, there are purple... Legos. <laughs> Legos in between the shapes that are there to that's where you can Spacers. like slide and move yeah. things. So right. but yeah. those can also be turned into blocks. Right. So you have to do it in very specific ways. Again, there's like there's a there's some you stuff to kind of understand here yeah. before you're gonna really under get this game. Uh, I I talked about the fact that you can earn these like these upgrade Call moves. Call them what they nice are. Mention a few of them. They're called know, they're magic for some reason. Yeah. Okay, I'll take it. I like that. Uh, you're, it's a sphere. Fireworks are um, magic. Magic. Okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so let's talk through some of those. You can get the firecracker. You can get dynamite. You can get a magnet. Uh, different each things. of you get a ray gun. Each of them do the same thing, but in a different flashy way. Different so, ways. like the firecracker yeah. removes one small section that you point at when it releases. Uh, the dynamite removes multiple sections. A much bigger. The section. magnet yeah. is fun. It, you kind of like it's like a vacuum cleaner. You kind of move the cursor and it Not sucks up whatever pieces it, you go yeah, over. Pulls them up. Um, yeah. There's one of them that removes this one whole layer, just like gone. Oh yeah, that's powerful. Uh, some really really cool you so th this is a very simplistic game in that you are only using a few buttons on your n64 controller in fact one of my favorite things yeah, is let's that talk. you're not holding the middle you are holding yeah. the outer wings baby uh yeah, this and is uncommon and you're using the d-pad which i think is necessary here because i think using that toggle would not be what you need i, th oh, I think it, it been, could it work if it functioned I don't think it even functions. Um, oh, no, it doesn't. Game. It doesn't. So I love yeah. the choice to keep it D-pad for many reasons. One is traditional Tetris is D-pad. Two, it's underutilized on the N64 controller. For what? D-pads are, like, objectively the best control controlling things on controllers. 
<laughs> and you, like you said, precise uh, movement is important, really important here. Right. Realistically, this is probably just because this was a game that was developed for something else and then ported over, and they Good kind call. of already yeah. have the scheme. Yeah, yeah. you know, but works. It 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 speaks so much to Nintendo's wisdom in creating the hybrid option of doing both things. I love that controller. I know we've talked about it. We won't uh, beat that dead horse again. It's classic, and it's really fun to be in a not trigger mode, but in a D pad two hand mode. A drops the piece that you currently have uh, that's up next. B is you hold slide. it to slide and slide. you release it. And then bottom C is what actually does the power, the magic, yeah. sorry. The, the magic. Ma yeah, it's, your, it's your wand. It's your wand, the magic ability. So simplistic layout, um, which is good because when you've got a little bit more of an unintuitive experience, having an intuitive handling yeah. of it is helpful is super important yeah you want that did, to feel familiar did you guys get frustrated by yes. the changing block uh, uh oh the rotating one that they yeah, give you that block one you get every once in a while that cycles through all the different blocks. so you have types, to wait and you have to try and time it with the block you need at the right time and they give you that one and if I you're always stuck missed it. so they think they're yep. being nice but yes i get frustrated with it um oh that's to be nice yeah, because it felt like a punishment. It, it felt like punishment because often you would stop on the one you don't want. But yeah, totally, they put it there so that, like, you're like, man, I really need this specific piece for this combo to work. Then you get to that one. That's what that's for. But like, it, it's it's actually it goes quite fast. And so yeah, I selected the wrong one all the time. I want to confess something again. Oh, not going to be a surprise, and I would like to know. If y'all have had an experience that I never had. Okay. I have okay. never once ever, I don't think, at least to this degree, experienced the Tetris effect. Which is an actual thing that has a Wikipedia. The well, Tetris it's an actual game. Explain. It's an I, that's not a bad idea for an actual game name. No, but there's a game called Tetris Effect. I, I, that's what I'm saying. I believe you. Uh, okay. But I'll, I'll just read this. I, I, I think you already know what it is. I think I'm familiar with the concept, but clarify. The Tetris Effect occurs when someone dedicates vast amount of time, effort, and concentration to an activity, which thereby alters their thoughts, experience, dreams, and so on. It originates from the popular video game Tetris. When people played it for a prolonged amount of time, they can find themselves thinking about ways different shapes in the real world can fit together, such as boxes at the supermarket shelf or buildings on a street. They see colored images when they close their eyes, you, all those things. You've never had... This? That's not my. That, I think my brain uh, doesn't do that. Not no, not just Tetris. Right, like any other. Oh, you just either either you think very differently than yes. me, or yes. you just don't go hard enough at games, which is also possibly a possibility. I I remember having vivid Halo Two dreams. <laughs> okay. Uh, I've, PTSD. I've, I remember walking around with uh, with my wife in the middle of her playing lots of Breath of the Wild, and Say every what like you weed we would see, she would be like, I could she'd be like "Oh, I need to go harvest that." Uh. <laughs> yeah, like I bet there's a Korok seed under that car because it's like oh, sitting yeah, yeah, out yeah. by itself, and like you totally think in a way that that is influenced by the fact that you spend a lot of time in a game, and I. I see it everywhere with, yeah. with a lot of games. I've, I've experienced it, especially the one you said about the supermarket shelves uh, being arranged incorrectly and how you could arrange it to get a line. <laughs> yeah, that, that yep. as a kid especially, because I was playing a lot of Tetris back then, I just didn't know that's what it was coming yeah. from. I, I think the closest I've gotten, and I'm not proud of this, is after I played like Grand Theft Auto for too long, and then I would be driving... <laughs> I, I would you to punch somebody in the face. I, no, what? I I would have to like slow myself down so that I'm not like speeding away or yeah, trying bad. to ramp off of something. <laughs> <laughs> like yeah. that. Oh, one, or ramping murder. off yeah, murder. of uh, the the trailer of like an 18 wheeler that has like the things down. Oh, I've thought about <laughs> that every time. I think I'm we like, just want to do that for fun. But I'm like, I know I could maybe, do this. Maybe I won't. That's the game. Maybe that's the game I would have gone back and removed. Did you <laughs> that auto? Uh, yeah. To lower crime rates. <laughs> just to make everybody a better um, game. Yeah, yeah, and and just just an uh, an aside to that, 
Tetris Effect is a, is a Tetris game, I think, that you, Dustin, would like more than any other Tetris game. And I wish maybe you'll play it one day. But, um, yeah, I didn't know that was a, an official term. Interesting. Aged. Tetris Effect is not an experience I had or a game that I've played. But I did look this week to see a ranked list of all the other Tetri games. Oh, God. And I wanted to not go through tons of them with you, but according to The Gamer, their top five Tetris games thought I'd okay. share with you. Tetris Fear is number eight on their list, by the way. Okay. Which I would imagine if you're in top ten, because I would imagine there's a lot of Tetris games, Oh, yeah. Right? <laughs> that's, that's nothing to scoff at. I bet there's a lot of Tetris clones. I don't know if there's a lot of Tetris games, because they probably protect their yeah. IP. I feel like it's probably been cloned a lot more than it's No. Been. How Here's their top Tetris five. Games? Tell me what your experience are with any of these. Number five, they have Tetris Party Deluxe for the Wii and the DS. I didn't play that one, but I'm I aware. No idea. But I'd, I'd try Number it. four is Tetris 99, which is one off of the one that Kenny had mentioned earlier. I disagree <laughs> the, with that. The one I was actually talking about. That's the Battle Royale Tetris. Yeah, Battle Royale of classic It's a great Tetris. game. I love it. I love the concept. You disagree because you think it should be higher, Nolan, or lower? Lower. Ooh. Top ten bit lower N number th three is called tetris ds you can probably guess what console that one was on played it uh the gamecube number two sounds interesting actually puyo is that how pu pu puyo 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 tetris tetris 2 i played it it's where you it's it's frantic kenny it's where the mode swaps between the two games, Puyo Puyo and Tetris, on the fly. You're having to. It is fantastic. No. no. It is novel and it's so good. Nope. And both oh, games are. Maybe this is the one that no one's thinking about. Number one actually sounds phenomenal. I'm telling you. Okay. It, Tetris. They have Tetris Effect Connected. It is on modern consoles and it is similar oh, okay. to a game that we played before or a couple games where. Every move and placement is connected to the music, so it's an experience. You are creating oh, the soundtrack as you're placing. Cool. But it actually that's is. Neat. Unlike those other games. Um, connected to the music. Oh, yeah, yeah, I got you. The <laughs> feedback right. yeah, on that game is unmatched. I played it last year for the first time. I bought it on Steam. Beat it in a day. Amazing. I will replay it often because it's just... You know how I love music in games. High emphasis on that. Like, I know we're not talking about that game right now, but Dustin, I, I genuinely think you would have a good time with it. They're they're too good, though, to put Tetris Classic in their top five. I did ask yes, Kenny. Like, come on. How far down their is, list is it? Because I'm judging them on principle alone here. Kenny's the guy that says Final Fantasy 1 is the best Final Fantasy. I know. Fantasy. <laughs> I, it's not the best Final Fantasy ever. It's one of my personal favorites, but it certainly is in the top ten. Yeah. Yeah, it's probably well, in their top ten. It's not in their top five, at least. But I, I thought that was interesting that because I feel like there, there's not too much you can do with Tetris without changing. Yeah, yeah. What yeah. Tetris right. is, and this is one of those. And to some degree, this is a change. There, there you go. It, it's which is fine. It's got enough of the yeah. familiar things, the block sizes, the fact that it's falling that you can call it a Tetris game, but functionally, this is a very different yes. game. Yes. In fact, I would think that Tetris fans wouldn't gravitate to this. Maybe they would like it as a novelty, but not as a furthering of the Tetris experience. Yeah, I would consider it separate in my mind. But I would see that Tetrisphere might be for people that weren't able to get fully into Tetris because it's a fundamentally different game. Like you I don't can see... Start. What you're, I can see fans calling this a non-Tetris game, for real. Um, like 100, it's it's fundamentally different. You're clearing blocks. You're not like it's just different. Yeah. And I wonder how it was received at the time of release. That's what I'm curious about. And I, I mean, I'm sure there's there's information. I mean, as a that. puzzle game on the Nintendo 64, I can't imagine it was like a booming like financial success. Sure. But I would imagine. Critically, it was probably relatively well it received. It received generally favorable reviews out of 42 titles. Tetrisphere ranked number 27 in terms of sales for Nintendo games that year. So okay. middle okay. ground. It's okay. Yeah, it did okay. And 
Yeah. Uh, as of March 31st, 1998, H2O Entertainment said that they had sold 430,000 copies. So that's not bad. Mm. It's not, not bad. Terrible. I, yeah. I do think it fits so nicely on the N64. I don't know a ton of puzzle games on the N64. Um, outside of that other Tetris game, which when I made by the same people, when I looked at the cover, that's the one that I rented. Oh, but I did know of this one because yeah. So Tetris remake or whatever it's called. The Tetris. new Tetris is what it's called. The new Tetris. Um, called it, yeah. And this one fits nicely because there aren't. A, I don't think that category on the N64 is super fleshed out. And again, going back to the D-pad thing, it's just fresh. Like, it, it, it functions nicely on the N64. The graphics, we talked about the 3D, you know, introduction. And when, in this era, when people were jumping to 3D format, you ended up with the polygons. You ended, And this was with character models. But for this game, there's no character models except for the little, like, mascot guy, which is just a cute little ball. Um you could get away with more here and nothing looks super off with it. And so I think it just fits here. Like, I, yeah, it just fits on the console. Puzzle, puzzle games too, just generally are age relatively well yeah. as a genre. Yeah. You know, it's something we pointed out before, but like, that just one's one of the best examples of what you're ever doing. Yeah. And it, it, it kind of worked. And then that simplicity is still there. You're not depending on graphics for your experience or your gameplay. And so that helps this be a, be a better, like retrospective kind of game than some of the ones we play. As long as the mechanics work, like, cause graphically, sure. musically, yep. that's not why you're playing puzzle games. As, the, as long as the mechanics work, then, then that can be transferable in years. Uh, I mean, this is Tetris. You might be playing it because of the music. This is I was, I was, I was about to say this that. This is a Tetris game, and a person could go to it expecting high-quality music. And Me. what are they going to get? High-quality music. I, uh, to the point about Tetris Effect being integrated, that's a whole different story. This does have an OST in the backdrop like a normal Tetris game, and it is amazing. It, I thought it was so not only so listenable and, good, and quality and good, but fit... Tetris it fit like Tetris is kind of even from the first game has been known for those that original track and Type then a. always yeah or B and then the, having the A is better A is <laughs> A is the Russian it's more theme cl- A like is more the, classic yeah. it's more classic um all of them are bangers all of them are all bangers and them? then they didn't compromise on these newer games with the OST and this one included uh it just honestly Having played the newer games, Tetris Effect, there are some themes and vibes in the track in, in the tracks in this game with some of the like singing, like chanting kind of singing uh, that goes on that kind of kind of defined what the music would be going forward for the series. I really love the OST. If you can't tell, and yes, I would play I, it for the music. I'll agree with you that it's great. I did feel it was a little bit heavier on 64 vibes than i well like techno drum and bassy personally prefer yeah which you know i love the (laughs) the yeah just the sound font and kind of that the era of what it was going for and kind of that electronic feel not my personal favorite music style still super listenable and very good it just felt a little more 64 ish (laughs) than something i would objectively choose like in a vacuum but great music so i'm not i'm not taking would you agree with this IGN considered Tetrisphere's soundtrack the fourth best of any N64 game. <laughs> I don't know. I'd have to like wow. probably way not. Up there. Probably not. That's, way, That's up way, there. way up there. Top ten, I could see the argument for a hundred percent. I I don't want to undersell. I think this is a v- above average high quality OST on the N64. Yeah, it's I, really I, yep. really good. I think it totally fits. You want yeah. a zen out musical experience with these kind of games and it gives you that. Yes. And I love the flexibility that you can change it on the go. So yeah. if you want a different song, pause. It's a pause menu away and you can change the track to so whatever nice. other track that you want. That is super nice. Again, I don't think any of them are as catchy, memorable, drill in your head Tetris effect as Type A or B. I'll obviously, agree. that's a, yeah, that's obviously hard to do, and it's, it's a different and it's a different genre. So we're doing the yep. techno house, drum and bass stuff yes. here. 
but again yeah. it works and just different time and different audience you oh, know man like, i was yeah. i loved that i was the audience if you want a copy of Tetrisphere for your Nintendo 64, it is Christ. only $13 used, but if you want it new, it's $141. Okay, that's not terrible. That's... Some of those, man, N64 games are so expensive now. Really? I thought this one would be way higher. It's not a massive catalog, is it? Like compared it's to not massive, some of no. the earlier ones? I wouldn't what call it I... massive. It It's definitely not massive. It's it, Yeah, it's but there, there's something about the games that people just love i mean they grew up with them and so that's why it went up final thoughts at the end of each and every one of our episodes we determine whether or not the game gets our vote for new game plus status which is our general thumbs up or thumbs down it does require two-thirds of the vote to swing one way or the other nolan what did you think about tetris i'm Fear. nolan and i love tetris while they changed many things this is undeniably a tetris game at its core pardon the pun the the vibe the combos the fast thinking required and the ost all point to what makes any tetris game fun to me so this development team while they have four games clearly and and very interesting that you pointed out that this was supposed to be a non-tetris game that they got that got pulled in but the dude consulted it and so I'm sure that had a lot to do of why the essence of this game is right, but it is right. I love experimental side games in series that I already love, especially when they're fun, and especially when they can't when they don't compromise on why the game is good and what why the series is good. NGP all day. And it's N64. This game's for me. I know it's not gonna be for Dustin. I'm sad, but I love this game. I I love that Nolan is like if a game is fun then i had fun playing it he's not wrong <laughs> i uh have a uh an interesting relationship with tetris but um this interesting this has been my favorite tetris game so far so <laughs> okay i'll take I don't, it <laughs> but i don't i don't know that's, that's i don't know that's, that's, that's not that's, a great thing uh, but that but it still does nothing for me. And I, look, I'm the I'm the foremost sad person about this. Like I want to experience what y'all experience, and I theoretically get it. Like that idea of it clicking and zinning out, and then just and then being able to drop blocks and get gravity combos and all of that. I f look points have never done anything for me, you know, like. Here, I think what it comes down to, honestly, is just puzzle games largely are not for me unless the puzzle has some kind of story <laughs> or, <laughs> or, 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 or like interesting characters. Like, I'm even um, thinking of Professor Layton. You Layton know, the reason I why I like those, it's not about the puzzles, it's yeah. about the world and the characters, the characters and the stories. And, and, the, and so, yeah. look, Layton's so good. I, 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 I totally respect. So, please hear me. Like, I totally respect. Um, some of these games. I still don't love Dr. Mario, but Puyo Puyo and Tetris and stuff, I get it. Uh, and I wish that it worked for me. It doesn't. And I I don't have fun with them. And I put in multiple hours this week and, and got it. Started to get it and had some fun, but not enough to say that this is a game that everybody should play. Although it is a curiosity. A, Tetris, a 3D Tetris game on the Nintendo 64, that is interesting. But I still am going to say no new game plus status from me. No surprise there, Kenny. I'm scared yeah, about I'm you too, shocked. but here we go. <laughs> uh, you don't need to be scared. I'll give this one New Game Plus status. I, yeah. I won't do it as sort of resoundingly as you did, but it sets out, it accomplishes what it sets out to do, and that's super important. Um, I think when you get in the groove and you've learned it, it's a fairly fun game and can be a great sort of zone out, enjoy the process experience, which is important. I do think it's a little bit, because it's more convoluted, it's a little less elegant than some of the other Tetris formula games. I do think there's a little bit more bar to learn it that's a little frustrating um, and, and some other just sort of aging factors there. I think this one is ripe for a fresh take on the concept, um, especially in VR. Anything that is big and moving and three-dimensional just works great there. I know I say that all the time, not being a VR game player, but I think this one would 
do great there. But it worked well enough for me, um, especially the puzzles, which were surprisingly more fun than I thought they were going to be. Um, though the real appeal is the chill out mode that I'm going to give it a yeah, new game plus check it out. But unless you're like a huge puzzle or Tetris enthusiast, maybe don't check it out quite as hard as Nolan will. That means the Tetrisphere is nice. New Game Plus certified. Surprised. But what did you think on our YouTube poll? 20% said yes, it's worth playing today. 7% said no, go play something else. And 73% never played this N64 classic. Mini in our I guess I hadn't either. <laughs> community played along with us. Did you even know it existed, Nolan? Yeah, for sure I knew it existed. It was just kind of in the back of my brain. Right. You know. Okay. And I had no idea. Uh, it's fine. Uh, some people <laughs> in our community, many, played along with us this week, sent in their thoughts on the Retro Game of the Week. Miss Muso said the nostalgia oh. hit hard with this one. One bad move and all the heart-pumping anxiety came flooding back. The gameplay <laughs> held up for me as I slid blocks around, aiming for bigger combos. There was also the satisfying chime when you complete a level. A nice touch. Then, after rescuing character after character after character... I was done. I didn't feel the need to play this again, not even in versus mode. There's nothing I find wrong with this, but like Tetris, it's the same game over and over. At least with Tetris Sphere, you can actually achieve something. C to D tier NGP from me. It is a quick game. Okay. And I think that's fine. Yeah. I think we're in relatively similar category of like NGP, but like lower. Well, spheres, not lower if that's sphere. Such a thing. Higher sphere. Not lowest, just lower. Bigger on you. Um, I. We didn't talk about the versus mode and she brought it up. So just real quickly, can I say, I think that would be the way to play this game personally. I think you're playing versus CPU, aren't you? Or can you play versus each other? You can play okay. versus CPU, but there's a two player. But it's on the same like, head screen head and split yeah. screen with huge Split spheres. screen's chaos. Split screen would be crazy, but the, the find the big combo and bury them because of it, like, is yeah. fun. Yeah. Conan. The real the one? This the barbarian said the tutorial at the beginning was helpful in describing what was about to happen, though I'm sure some basic yes. intuition would have got me there anyway. The music is fitting for the time period, not overly annoying, but worth turning down the volume, especially so as to not hear that weird squealing noise on the menus. Maybe it's just me, but I just really struggle to see the dimensionality here. Unless you were spinning the sphere just right, it was nearly impossible to tell how many layers of blocks there were on some spaces. I felt like I was just randomly hunting for open spaces that matched up where I felt like there should be one before dropping my tiles. This was a unique attempt at a 3D twist of a classic, but not worth seeking out. No NG. Well, that was a skill issue. Um, I do love your talk show, though. <laughs> Rad Mad Mal said, This is an easy game to pick up and play, but a hard game to master. The tutorial is a Fair. great feature, and there are many modes. Graphically, it's a bit muddled and fuzzy and hard to tell exactly where your pieces may land, and while trying to go fast, one extra click over, and you're yeah. looking at a skull. The music is perfect Agreed. for me. It fits the era it was made and holds holds up for me as a fan of edm while a fun yes. quirky take on a matching game tetris this is not if this had kept the original name and left tetris off the title it may have been even a better move i can't in good faith recommend this as a tetris game when regular tetris is miles above this miles above if if the if the question is compare between the two this one doesn't make the cut by any stretch but it's not thankfully right. we can play more than one game right and then Garlisle said, I had distant, fond memories of this as a kid, as a game I could zone out and play a lot. Coming back to it, it mostly holds up. The mechanics aren't too involved unless you're trying to play specifically for score when they're all right, but not my favorite. However, the focus on high speed in most of the modes is a great match for the relative simplicity, and I enjoy that a lot. Regrettably, the versus mode is very snowball-y in design and suffers from <laughs> some horrible performance issues, which causes a lot of missed inputs that should never be a problem in a puzzler. Is this an A-list puzzler like the Tetris it name drops? No, but it might be one of the more slept-on titles in the N64's catalog. A re-release that runs smoother would be welcome. That's so true. Slept on in the yep. N64 catalog. So true. Feels like it would be a pretty good Switch title, you know, just to kind of like handheld. Yeah. Now, I was playing it on Steam Deck this week. Felt oh, great. Nice. For, for now. How <laughs> What's saying VR? For now, set, we're going to set aside Tetris Sphere and we are going to randomly select the next game that we're going to be playing from our Retro Master list. 15 years old or older. 
any genre, any console. Randomizing now. We're going to be playing a game that came out for both the PlayStation and the Dreamcast in 1999, right after in 2000 for the Nintendo 64. Okay. This is a sequel, Kenny. Nice. And it is a sequel to a game that we played before on the podcast. Oh, that's even cooler. That's good. Okay, and fun. it's a sequel to a game that we played before on the podcast early in our career. Oh, okay. that's good. That'll be fun too. Yeah. Do you know if we gave the original game New Game Plus or not? We weren't able to, I don't think, because we played it with a guest. Oh okay. no! <laughs> Hold on. Nolan, you were excited. Why are you no longer excited? I'm going through early guest games, and I'm not happy. Okay. This game was developed by Luxoflux and published by Activision. It is a vehicular combat yeah, game. Nine. And the game that we're going to be playing for the next eight days is oh vigilante God. 8 second offense they didn't call it vigilante 9 no it's vigilante 8 i knew it was vigilante idiot i knew it <laughs> no one was excited and then i saw his face drop and i know that he, he thought no i rocked. knew it was gonna be bad when you said it was on playstation dreamcast and in 64 <laughs> i was like ah should we get dan back is that who we played it with was, it was dan dan I don't remember his like handle, but it was Dan. He was and, he's like, a YouTuber, or was a YouTuber. Yeah, I mean, yeah. this was a long time ago. In fact, hold on. So we played Vigilante Eight. That was episode twenty-two. <laughs> he was our first guest. So, yeah, he was, was over, our. He was Dan Q eight thousand. Dan Q eight thousand. Wow, bro. Eight years no. ago. Eight pick years again. Ago. Re roll. Not picking again. I'm calling for a re roll. We this is able crazy. To do that once a month. For the next. <laughs> What if we each had a reroll we could use once I a would month? Be, it would have to I, be once a, once a year. Once a year was fair. I th that should be a new thing. But it's not yet. For the it's not for the next seven or eight days, oh, we Nolan in particular is going to be oh. playing Vigilante Eight Second Offense. Find a copy and play it along with us this week. Don't second offend us um, by not joining Discord. Discord.gg slash New Game Plus. You can also support the ongoing production of your favorite retro gaming podcast by heading to patreon.com slash NGP podcast. And uh, you'll be joining the likes of our newest patrons, Max and Drexington Von Greybeard. Ooh, uh, that's a name. Thanks for your support. We, of course, want to say a huge shout out to our director level supporters as well. Bro Jim, Super Hyper, The Kentucky Kid, Siegfried, Smashing Bricks Retro Gaming Podcast. Appreciate you guys. And to our many, many producer level supporters, couldn't do what we do without you. So big thank you to Alex, Alias X, Marley, and Antonin, Arlen, Yuki, Ben, Craig, Dustin's Five O'Clock Shadow, Garlisle, Alex, Harold, J. Robert, Jake, Jared, jo Jordan, Joey, Justified, Justin, Kenny's Beard, Clint, Corey, Levi, Maxima, Megatroid, Miss Muso, Not Enough Dog, Riff, Sajin, Shane, Shauna, Stephen Fox, Psycho Mantis, Thomas Turtle, Unbedavable, and Zion. You guys are the best. You can find us on our social media. That's Facebook, Twitter, Twitch, TikTok, YouTube. Links are in the show notes. Listen directly on any podcast provider of your choice. Make sure you subscribe so that you are the first to get new NGP episodes. And while you're at it, please leave a kind rating and review. Our episode artwork was created by Dave. Our video episode was edited by our friend Dylan. Audio episode was edited and produced by our friend Dan Willett. Join us next week as we play Vigilante 8 Second Offense. Until then, I'm still T. I'm still talking with my radio voice, and I'm not sure why. I am sitting this one out. <laughs> no, you're sitting in the driver's seat, vroom vroom. And this has been New Game Plus.